Not content with owning some of the most used products and services in the world, Google is trying to get into the video game game, but they're doing it in a really ambitious way that would have gotten you laughed off of the internet a few years earlier. The initiative is called Google Stadia. Instead of releasing a console that plays or downloads games to a physical hard drive, Stadia allows you to purchase a game from its store and play it instantly from Google's servers, streaming the video of your gameplay over the internet and into your home. This technology has been around for a while, but never for too long. There was Gaikai and OnLive before that, but with PlayStation Now, Project X Cloud, and the aforementioned Google Stadia, and potentially even a streaming service from Amazon, this could very well end up being the primary way games are consumed in the future by a whole lot of people. I was even a part of Google's Project Stream, which tested what would eventually become Stadia, and I thought everything worked pretty well. Now normally this wouldn't be something I cover, but if this does end up taking over the video game world, fighting games are surely going to be affected. After all, sending your button presses to a server and having that server interpret the input and feed it back to you in the form of a streaming video has got to take some kind of time, right? But with promises and buzzwords like negative latency, it feels like there's at least some kind of confidence in the technology to really deliver a special experience. And with a genre like fighting games that rely on responsive controls, I wanted to see if these games could keep up. I'll be honest, a lot of what I have to say isn't new, but I haven't seen anyone else analyze this through the lens of what a fighting gamer is looking for in a new platform. So I put Stadia to a fighting game's specific test to see if games in this form are worth your time and attention. So if you enjoy this video, please give me the pleasure of your subscription on YouTube and to follow on Twitter. In order to research this topic to an acceptable degree, I thought, hey, I guess I gotta try this Stadia thing out, right? So, against my better judgment, I dropped 140 bucks and pre-ordered the Founders Edition. From that, I was able to get a Chromecast Ultra, a fancy controller in a pre-order exclusive color. The controller itself isn't all that bad, it actually feels pretty nice in the hands and all of the buttons are pretty clicky and where you'd expect them to be. If you've ever held a PS4 controller, you've held this thing, and if you want to play on a TV locally via Chromecast, you'll need two of them which is kind of lame. I also got three months of access to Stadia Pro and an early access to the Stadia platform itself. And boy oh boy, Stadia is definitely early in more ways than one. First, let's talk about the game selection. They launched with 22 games, two of which are fighting games, Mortal Kombat 11 and Samurai Showdown. I'd be remiss to say that Stadia's launch lineup is anything short of disappointing. When you look at other streaming services like PS Now and xCloud, they lap Stadia when it comes to game choice in just about every genre. I messed around a little bit with PS Now, and honestly, it was really impressive at the amount of high quality titles that they had on the service. With a single paid subscription, which comes out to about $10, you gain access to some really amazing fighting games like Street Fighters 2, 3, and 4, any Blaze Blue that you want. Uh, Tekken 7, Garu, 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 Mark of the Wolves, and Bellator MMA Onslaught. <laughs> and for most of these titles, PlayStation Now allows you to download these games right to your console, so you never have to worry about something like an unstable internet connection. But with Stadia, you're paying full price for a cloud-only gaming experience, and that comes with some pretty steep drawbacks, which I'll tell you about right now. I'll be talking about Samurai Showdown here exclusively because it's the game I have the most experience with, so I'll be able to tell you more about its differences. And it's free. Remember, I'm already 140 bucks in the hole, so I'll take all the help I can get. Right off the bat, I noticed that my PS4 Mad Cats TE2 Plus fight stick wasn't Stadia compatible. And that's really unfortunate. I'm used to PlayStation controllers not working on PC, but this is something that's supposed to be more than just a PC. I'm assuming that even though the stick is just a PS4 controller, they can't account for every single device ID out there. I'll check back in a few months when Stadia gets a few patches because it might just support more controllers then, but for now, my Xbox 360 Street Fighter Cross Tekken Fight Stick works just fine. But beyond that, the first thing that I noticed about Sam Show on Stadia wasn't about the gameplay, but rather the quality of the visuals being fed to my screen. 
For context, I have a 300 up, 300 down internet connection wired to my PC via ethernet cable. My connection is fast, stable, and reliable, which means that I should be able to get the highest quality image they offer. And for the most part, I do. Most of the time, the visuals look great, almost as sharp as the console that Stadia is trying to replace. But there are times where the mask slips and you can kind of see that, oh yeah, this is still just a video stream. Even sitting on the menus, you can kind of tell that game streaming has its limits visually. Images are less sharp, text is slightly blurrier, colors look a little washed out, and there are compression artifacts during more complicated scenes and images. If you know what to look for, you can absolutely tell that you're playing a streamed game. Once you actually are in-game playing, you start to notice it less, but it's always there. This problem's exacerbated once your connection quality dips. I took my internet connection down a peg by attempting to game on a TV in another room via Wi-Fi, relying on a significantly weaker wireless network. And there you really get a chance to see the text start to break down, like this scene where Haomaru's Cyclone Slash turns the video feed into a mess of pixels. This is, after all, live streaming video that relies on being able to feed a continuous series of inputs to Google's servers, so they really need to make sacrifices in visual quality to keep an unbroken stream where connection speed is below what the tech asks for. But if I'm being honest, this isn't really all that surprising. This is a somewhat new technology that's trying to push a massive amount of data through to your living room, up to 20 gigs an hour if you play in 4K. If you can't run a video stream reliably, even on a wired internet connection, I can already tell you that this just isn't for you. You'll get dropped frames, skips, and a resolution so low that you'll be able to count the number of pixels on your screen with one hand. But what you really want to hear is whether or not it affects the gameplay experience at all. Well, boys and girls, well, 99% of boys and 1% of girls, Strap in, because this is the point in the video where I tell you that Stadia is just a laggy, latency-infested gimmick that no serious fighting game player should ever consider even thinking about messing around with, right? Well, that's what I would be saying if I didn't actually sort of like this thing. When it works, Stadia is actually a bit of a mind-blowing piece of tech. I'm able to just Pop open a browser window, go to stadia.com and jump right into a game. No downloading or copying or anything like that. I can take my games on the road with my old hunk junk laptop from 2013 and play games so far above its punching weight it's not even funny. I can play them on my TV via Chromecast and in the future TVs will probably just come with Stadia built in. Sort of like those hotel TVs with bomb ass in 64 games. But previous gripes aside, Stadia is actually compatible with a ton of different controllers. And that's all before mentioning that in ideal conditions, Stadia is surprisingly competent at delivering a satisfactory gaming experience, even for those who have an eagle eye for input lag. Seriously, at peak conditions, I can't stress enough how close Stadia gets to almost making me feel like I'm playing offline. But even though I was surprised at how well Google Stadia performs, almost just doesn't cut it. I don't think I'm able to recommend it to a lot of you who are watching this video right now if you're just going to play fighting games on this thing. Due to the technology at work here, Stadia is inherently going to nerf fighting games. This platform, just like PlayStation Now and xCloud, will work best with games that don't require incredibly precise movement. If it takes a few extra frames for Arthur Morgan from Red Dead Redemption 2 to turn from left to right, People on Stadia will already notice that a lot less, primarily because it already takes them forever to do just that, so a few extra frames of input lag really aren't that big of a deal. But with fighting games? A few extra frames could mean the difference between blocking or eating a super special move for 70% damage. And while it's not the absolute nightmare of input lag and dropped commands that I thought it was going to be, there is still a not unnoticeable layer of input lag permeating the whole experience. Now mind you, consoles do still have a small amount of input latency between the time your button press happens and when it shows up on screen. But at least there, the lag is consistent enough to eventually get used to. With Stadia, it felt like while my internet connection was as stable as possible, the latency was not. I'm no digital foundry and this is no scientific test, but I took some high-speed videos of how long it took from button press to action on screen from my PS4 
and on Stadia via PC with Ethernet cable. I found that the PS4's input lag was generally stable, while the latency from Stadia varied a lot more, despite the same general network conditions. The point here is that the inconsistency really doesn't lend itself to having a good fighting game experience on Stadia. If you have a hitch in your internet or your mom starts trying to call her friend and you gotta be like, Mom, get off the phone! I'm about to beat Daigo over here! Come on! That interruption might cause adverse effects during a critical moment in a match. In other words, I'd rather take Season 1 of Street Fighter V on PS4 with its 8 frames of input lag versus a hypothetical Street Fighter V on Stadia with anywhere from 4 to 15 frames of input lag, depending on how your internet connection feels at the moment. Fortunately though, this is something that reps at Google are definitely aware of and are working on. And as the entire Stadia ecosystem doesn't rely on user-end physical hardware, that means that input lag issues could theoretically get better over time. But something I'm most concerned about is a potential issue for the platform that can actually get worse the further away we get from Stadia's launch. I got my code to register on Stadia pretty late, so just about everyone else who pre-ordered got a chance to get their hands on the platform before me. So during a peak time, I hopped on and searched for a ranked match in Sam Show. I made sure to make my search parameters as wide as I could possibly make them, and didn't find a match. I searched again and didn't find one again. But when I finally did find another soul ready to clash swords, they ended up being a one bar connection from Mexico. Now finding quality matches on Samurai Showdown is a challenge even on consoles. It's not necessarily the most popular fighting game out there. But what made me concerned is that this game is actually free for all current Stadia users with an active premium membership. And remember, anyone who pre-ordered has that subscription. This makes me wonder about what the player base for this platform will look like in a year. If I'm having a hard time finding a decent online match in a free game during a time where most people should be online, I don't want to think about the ghost town games like this could turn into if more developers don't guarantee crossplay with Stadia. On PlayStation Now, you're still matching with those in the PlayStation ecosystem, so matches are way easier to come by. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find anyone willing to play me in Bellator MMA Onslaught, but that's besides the point. But the rail kick in the pants? It's not just Sam Show. There are stories and tweets out there about it being nigh impossible to find matches on all kinds of different games on Stadia, like Mortal Kombat 11 and Destiny 2. And when I was able to find a match, I was expecting... I don't know, in theory, since these games are spun up in data centers over the internet, I was thinking that maybe I would get a better online fighting game experience. After all, the only things that are talking to each other are two Google data centers, and they'd be better at getting a high quality connection going than anything else, right? Well, I don't know if I fundamentally misunderstood the technology that Stadia is based on, but the experience that I ended up getting wasn't any better than online play on PS4. In a way, it was actually significantly worse due to the delay-based netcode of Samurai Showdown mixed with the delay-based everything of Google Stadia. A 3-bar connection felt completely playable, while a 4-bar connection against a different opponent felt laggy, skipped frames, and felt like I was playing in sludge. And ultimately, from inconsistent visuals, input lag, and online gameplay experience, I finally called quits and packed up the Chromecast, at least until Google can get Stadia in a much better state. So I really don't expect Google Stadia to take the fighting game world by storm. Like I said, there are problems with the technology that impact fighting games way more than other genres, and for the probably 95% of you who own PS4 or an Xbox or a decent gaming PC to play fighting games on, or even video games in general, I really can't recommend Stadia to you. You'll get a much smoother, more consistent experience when playing on actual hardware, at least in 2019. That's not to say that you shouldn't at least try out some of the streaming services that are out there. PS Now, for example, allows you to download games right to your console. And it also has the best fighting game in the world on the service, Bellator MMA Onslaught. But for the other 5% of you, you're probably just casual fighting game fans or video game fans in general. You might buy one or two games a year and don't feel comfortable spending anywhere from two to five hundred bucks on a new console. And to you, and only you, I think the promise of an improving game library and an evolving streaming technology 
is going to be enough for me to recommend Stadia just to you. Just make sure that you call your ISP and upgrade that internet, and you're gonna need it. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give me a subscription on YouTube and a follow on Twitter. Also, here are all the Patreons that helped make this video possible. Shoot me a couple dollars if you'd like, and I'll see you in a few weeks. Thank you very much, everybody. Once again, have a good night. Bye-bye.